Kristen. Today on Capitol Hill, uh, Kristen Clark, who leads the Civil Rights Division for the Department of Justice, she testified and had to deal with, again, crazy Republicans as she talked about the rise in hate crimes and how the Department of Justice is doing their best uh, to go after these uh, white domestic terrorists. Uh, check out uh, some of what the testimony was today on Capitol Hill. Hate crimes have now spiked to the point where they are, as you describe, a top national threat priority. Um, this is probably an easy answer for you, but just so it's clear on the record, why is it important that a crime be charged as a hate crime rather than just a crime? Yeah, thank you, uh, Senator Whitehouse. Hate crimes not only target particular individuals, but they send a message to entire communities that they are not wanted. So it's important that we stand up to hate crimes because of the reverberating effects that they have across communities. And um, I noticed in your testimony that in most of the cases you referred to, the individual who committed the violent crime was the individual who was charged with a hate crime. You also mentioned a New Jersey case in which there was a conspiracy charged involving uh, an organization that um, I guess the crime itself was the repeated vandalization of properties. Um, how often are you able to go beyond the actual individual at the point of violence in a hate crime and look at the organization that the individual may have been a member of, say, a white supremacist militia group, or... Um, an entity or an individual who might have participated so actively in spinning that person up into the state of mind that made them become violent, that they have criminal culpability. So beyond the actual individual at the scene of the crime, are you able to use conspiracy, aiding and abetting, other theories of uh, liability to expand beyond just the individual and uh, do you need more help? Should you be doing that? And do you need more help to do that if you feel you should be doing that? Thank, thank you for the question, Senator. So we prosecute individuals and not groups. And there are cases where uh, we are able to prosecute a set of co-defendants where the facts lead us to understand that there are a number of people uh, who work together to carry out a heinous hate crime. Um, one example involves the Dar al-Farouk mosque bombing uh, in Minnesota uh, that involved a defendant who recruited a set of co-defendants. Um, who were co-conspirators, in effect. And who, who worked together to yeah. carry out the bombing. Uh, so just to, I was referring back to your testimony that in November 2021, a New Jersey man was sentenced for conspiring with white supremacists to threaten and intimidate African-Americans and Jewish Americans by vandalizing properties throughout the country. Um, so that appears to have been charged as a, as a conspiracy case. Is that true? Um, I believe that's the case, Senator. And it, 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 the department would welcome the opportunity to work with the committee to um, understand what additional tools uh, we might be able to use in our arsenal to fully confront the range of, you know, hate crime uh, threats and offenses and conspiracies that we face in the country today. Yeah, I think that would be helpful, because if you're looking at an explanation of why we're seeing a spike in hate crimes, why this has had to be raised to a top national threat level by your department, um, I don't think it's just a sea change in the character of individual Americans. It probably relates to organized activity of various kinds that is driving this spike. Again, whether it's a white supremacist militia or whether it's some other terrorist type group. Um, and I think trying to make sure that we can address group liability in this space in the same way that we do in other spaces. We go after um, criminal organizations under a whole variety of statutes. We go after them as uh, conspiracies. We go after them as racketeering conspiracies. We go after them in a, in a variety of ways. And taking down the organization is often very 
helpful and important to the success of the of the final outcome. Yeah, we want Senator to ensure that we have a robust set of tools to fully confront the threat of hate and would welcome continued work with this committee to figure out what those additional tools might need to look like. You know, Damari, I want to start with you. The reality is uh, this, this Biden Department of Justice looks totally different from the uh, Trump Department of Justice. Uh, I got a story just the other day from the Department of Justice where uh, there was a police officer uh, out of Kentucky uh, who they uh, actually, um, you know, um, went after and busted. Uh, and charge them for uh, abusive treatment. Uh, when you talk about, again, targeting hate crimes as well, keep in mind, when Trump came in, they reduced the budget that were targeting white domestic terrorists to target Muslims. Uh, for po folks out there who say voting doesn't matter, this is a perfect example why voting does matter, because the person who is in charge of the DOJ plays a huge role in how they prosecute cases. No question. And the, the, the reality is we need more of a budget on this. We need more of these white supremacists to be arrested and tried and convicted. We need more money and resources so the Department of Justice can actually properly hold these officers who are brutalizing our brothers and sisters each and every day, holding them accountable. One of the issues, Roland, that a lot of people don't understand when it comes to these civil rights violations by the Department of Justice these situations or these cases are not made at the local uh, U.S. attorney level. These cases are sent back to D.C., and therefore it takes a long time for these cases to work through the process. I would like to see a doubling of the Department of Justice civil rights budget. I would like to see an opportunity for local uh, civil rights, local U.S. attorneys have an opportunity to bring their own civil rights cases without having to funnel everything back through D.C. But to your point, it's a much better than have what we had under Trump, but it's nowhere near what we actually need to confront hate, racism, discrimination, and white supremacy. Uh, it matters um, who sits in those positions um, when we talk about um, in terms of prosecuting Teresa uh, and making those decisions. And look, when you look at uh, whether it was the Arbery case, when you look at some of the other cases out there, I mean, uh, Christian Clark and that, that division has been a far more robust civil rights division than anything we saw in four years of Donald Trump. They've done more in one year than what the hell those fools did in four. Teresa, you on mute. Absolutely, I'm, I'm here today. Now nah, you're not on mute. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, but no, it, ha it has you really thinking about um, the type of leadership that is it uh, that's overseeing that office, and it does start at the presidency and who they appoint into that position. But Kristen Clark has shown on a, a countless times that. Um, and on countless occasions that she cares. Her office is caring about these cases. They are listening to black and brown people. They are listening to civil rights organizations. They are listening to advocacy groups and they are taking the necessary steps to actually get to a solution. So if we have more focus in those that are in leadership that are saying, we hear your cry and we wanna support efforts and use our office as a tool in order to bring justice then those are the type of people we need to keep in. I thought the uh, the Senate hearing that uh, that uh, she that we just heard um, was also an, an opportunity for us to hear the type of uh, things that she will have to go through, right? So I always get enticed when there is a Senate um, and and House hearings um, because again, we the inner workings of government sometimes does come on a full full display. And so it is uh, apparent that, you know, we support those who are in leadership that are doing right by the people. Um, that's all I have to say on that. Uh, Mustafa. You know, leadership matters. Trump didn't create hate, but what he did do was that he threw gasoline on hate and he gave a fertile ground uh, for it to actually continue to expand. If you look at the numbers, everybody go back, you can Google it. Go back and look at how hate crimes continue to increase year after year after year under the Trump administration. And that's why, like Roland said, you know, your vote matters because now you actually have some folks in there who are actually trying to do some things. But we got to also be mindful of the fact that if you are trying to dismantle and deconstruct uh, many of these uh, hate organizations that are out there, then it takes time to build the case 
And you got to make sure that you got the agents who have the opportunity to infiltrate and, and be able to get some of the information that's necessary. And then you got to have great folks like Kristen and others who are able to utilize the law to begin to not only prosecute, prosecute individuals, um, but also to begin to break down uh, these organizations. Because um, you see these white militia groups and others that are often a part of these organizations. Sometimes they're smaller, but sometimes they're actually linked together. Um, so to be able to hit them in the pockets and to be able to also put folks in jail requires resources, and it also requires a set of strategic, comprehensive actions to make that become a reality. Well, back to that my unfiltered video in just one moment. to be smart. Roland Martin's doing this every day. Oh, no punches! Thank you, Roland Martin, for always giving voice to the issues. Look for Roland Martin in the whirlwind, to quote Marcus Garvey again. The video looks phenomenal, so I'm really excited to see it on my big screen. We support this man, Black Media. He makes sure that our stories are told. See, this difference between Black Star Network and Black-owned media and something like CNN. I got to defer to the brilliance of Dr. Carr and to the brilliance of the Black Star Network. I am rolling with rolling all the way. Honored to be on a show that you own, a Black man. <laughs> Owns the show. Folks, Black Star Network is here. I'm real uh, revolutionary right now. Wow. Roland was amazing on that. Stay black. I love y'all. I can't commend you enough about this platform that you've created for us to be able to share who we are, what we're doing in the world, and the impact that we're having. Let's be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You can't be black on media and be scared. You dig?